right time to wean your breastfed baby? This is a question that keeps coming up for us here at the Thompson Method. So we thought that we would have a rather exciting conversation about it. Now, I just want to start, of course, by welcoming in the very, very special uh, Dr. Robin Thompson. Hello, Robin. How are you today? Hi, Chelsea. Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> I know that you are very eager to, before we get started, to say a few words on how this topic sometimes makes yourself and us women feel. Okay, so I, I start by saying that every woman, every mother, every baby is unique. Every person on the planet is unique. There's no two people the same. So I like to make it clear without being derogatory to anybody that it is a woman's choice always, that unless there's a major complication, it is a woman's choice. I think also that it's very important to understand that there is no mathematics and that I don't have any rules because I am fortunate enough to work with women one-on-one. -on -one. So I have their history, I hear their story, we work together, I watch their baby feed, we talk about introducing foods, we talk about teething, we talk about um, all, all those lovely growth, bumps in the road. All those growth and development factors that happen because we have to grow up. <laughs> and so no two people are the same. So I don't have rules. However, we need to talk about what women have access to and what women think they should do as well. Not Not just one rule fits everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I think that starting today's show with that little reminder that we are all unique and that it's our journey, which we are um, in control of. And yeah. that it's, it's best to do whatever suits us. My decision to feed my son Jacob beyond two years was not favoured by many around me. And some women who choose not to breastfeed at all, some, some, some women face a bit of backlash for that. And, um, you know, parenting is hard enough, isn't it, Robin, without having to yeah. face all this and judgment. So That's I'm right. Back. And Chelsea, no matter what, we, we or I and my team, we still support women no matter what choice they make. We work with women who are, have chosen not to breastfeed their babies. Some have particular reasons. And, and so, again, that's the uniqueness of every every woman and every baby. Yeah, every absolutely. breast is unique. Every nipple is unique. And people don't realise that. They hear the word breast and they think they're all the same. Yes, or, or they think they have something wrong with them, which is also yeah. very unfortunate because yeah, uh, sometimes not. that's what so, they're told. The most important thing is to listen to the mother. And when you listen to her, she gives you the cues and then you can work with her on her cues her self-knowledge and also her maternal instinct because her instinct is much better than anybody else's knowledge and in, and they don't use their instincts with mothers anyway. So instinctive knowledge. Yeah, for sure. So as we're talking about instinctive knowledge, um, let's say for the purpose of today's show that we are talking about women who have chosen to breastfeed have um, been supported in that decision and are mm. is, have established breastfeeding. Now, both Robin and I agree that we aren't particularly keen on the term weaning because this can be confused for introduction of solids foods. So um, we will use that term today because it is the most understood term, but we just want to make it clear that actually weaning is sometimes um, misunderstood and it's it, we're generally talking about the transition from breast milk onto um, either formula or um, other complementary foods or other milks that are available, which Dr. Robin will get into more detail. And just um, one more little point. Of is, course, go ahead. We don't feed our baby solids. That's hard stuff. It's yes. metal. We yes, feed our babies. very true. We well, you can, there's so many solids. options out there. There's traditional weaning, there's... <laughs> And that's why we don't particularly like the term. But yeah. what, what our language. focus is today is tra tra transitioning from breast milk onto whatever you choose. They may already be um, well established in food. By the time I weaned Jacob, he was eating plenty. <laughs> it was more for comfort. And of mm. course, the first topic I want to get into, which I think Dr. Robin has so much expertise on, 
is the actual benefits of breastfeeding. And, and Dr. Robin, can you just confirm that the benefits of breastfeeding don't end? They continue for as long for both mother and baby, for as long as mother and baby choose to breastfeed. Yes, and that's again unique and individual for each each mother and her baby, depending on each person's circumstances, because things change as they go along. So um, there's many benefits. There's the nutritional benefits. There's the the um, mic micro preparation of the gut is the, the microbiomes in the gut is so important for the baby, and the 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 uh, colostrum starts that preparation, but the yeah. breast milk as it's developing because they don't have breast milk in their, they don't have volume in their breast to start with, the baby actually creates that volume over the first few days. And so all of that together starts preparing the baby's gut for uh, the rest of its life. So mm. that's well written in the research and, and it's well talked about. But it, there are many other, there's the emotional benefits, there's the psychological benefits there's that nurturing that comes with the oxytocin levels that rise. And I was working with the mum today and we saw that happen. So, and between us, we're talking about that. I'm listening to her and I don't tell people what to do. We, I make suggestions that they might like to think about or they might like to test. Yeah. You know, it's a short test time. It's not something that they're told to do or have to do. Or It's, it's based on the unique situation. Um, so there's there's all the nutrition that mother needs and to go through it there's a whole long but again I think each mother has a unique you has a unique value in her breast milk for her baby That's we could it, right? the way we eat in different parts of the world the way we drink the way we eat <coughs> excuse me please is we couldn't say that every breast milk contains the same it's yes. not it doesn't happen that way but there is a broad um knowledge of what breast milk does contain and i think yeah. that it's um like you say it's well researched and well known now mm. that that breast milk is adaptable so the wonderful thing about breast milk is that if you have a poorly baby or toddler depending on when you choose to um, transition from the breast um, it, it, it knows what's going on with your baby, with your body, and it really is magic stuff. Um, so there are no, there's no pressure, right, Robin? There's no, there's no, um, we hear so yeah. many um, people that are saying to breastfeeding women, oh, you must stop. It's not beneficial for them now. It's only beneficial for you. You're doing it for self. Or your baby won't reasons. put on weight with breast milk. Or your baby won't do this with breast milk. Yes, that's, oh, <laughs> that's endless, isn't it? But I should yeah. imagine that bottle fed or formula fed or alternative fed babies also receive the same criticisms because you just can't escape it in parenting. <laughs> so if you're if you're experiencing this right now. We send you lots of love and empathy because we've been there, all of us. Um, comment, get in touch with us. Uh, maybe you need a little reassur reassurance um, or some love. That's what it's about here. So, yeah, we feel you. Yeah. We've been there for sure. So uh, this is a question that comes up all the time, Dr. Robin. How do I know if my baby is ready to be weaned from breastfeeding? Okay, I would say it, I think <laughs> only the mother knows that. And but, but but we can we can help her by making suggestions about the baby's cues, what we're seeing with the baby's cues. So when the baby's interested in food, there's a range of cues the baby starts doing. And then when when the baby's actually moving towards wanting foods, it's very clear at, that they do. And in my practice over 50 years as a midwife, 61 years in the health system, it's it's definitely cues that we can interpret, but the mother has both the internalization mm. and the observation and knowledge, and she knows instinctively. She knows, mm. and and so her baby talks with her in its own way. The, the cues are phenomenal, uh, and so therefore, if she if she follows her instincts, and there's no major complications as to why you know she should do this or she should do that, yeah. then she should follow that because. My experience, I was about to say, is between four and six months, babies start to show an interest in food, generally by beautiful foods, you know, non-chemical foods, foods yeah. preferably, um, and a range of tastes, not just uh, cereals, but a range of tastes. Yeah. 
and then the little baby then starts to, ooh, you know, like, and then maybe turn away, doesn't like, you know, mm. uh, don't like that. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because I've found in my role, um, my my wonderful role working alongside women here in the community, that so many babies have such different approaches to food. Some babies really aren't that interested in um, wasting time, some of them said, at the breast after they've introduced food. Um, Some of them pop on and off. And some of them, like my son Jacob, will be very reliant on breast milk and breastfeeding for, for a long period after that and still have um, a good time with with food. Some of them actually struggle to enjoy food um, and get the nutrients they need from foods because they're so reliant on the breast milk. So there are so many unique situations. Yeah, and, and some babies do go out to eight months before they're really ready for foods. Yeah. And again, it depends on that history for that little baby. It depends on that baby's needs. And as you know, it, generally when we're observing little babies, we don't have to worry too much about you know, what this baby's not going to do if we don't do this. Yes. And I think the most important thing around that stage that I learned from you was that it's perfectly normal for a baby to grow and plateau, grow and plateau yes. and, and to trust yourself. I think that's, yes, that's, that's really right. helpful. And, you know, there are mothers who do have difficulty. There are beautiful mothers around the world who, who even can't afford to buy the non-human milk for babies, you know, yeah. so... Yeah. Again, I can't emphasise enough, it's all about the unique mother and her baby. It's not about what we do for everybody doing exactly the same thing. However, we do have some guidelines and the guidelines help people think. Yeah, well, I could bring those up now, actually. That's a good The guidelines help about thinking about what might be but rather than making rules that doesn't yes. fit everybody yeah it's, it's, it's important to just recognize what we're showing now as guidelines yes. these aren't rules these aren't something we are saying you should no. follow but it's interesting no. to know that the world health organization and unicef um, recommend early initiation of breastfeeding within the one hour um, which is very similar to dr robin's principles of the three golden hours however please don't panic if you feel like that is not possible for you or that didn't happen, that's not what we're saying here. Um, they also recommend exclusive breastfeeding for around six months of life before the introduction of complementary and healthy nutritionist foods. Um, I'm not going to say solid because they, you may not choose to have introduction of solid foods. We did, um, we did baby led weaning where Jacob was eating what we were eating. So he was munching on bigger bigger vegetables and fruits. Um, however, my best friend, she did traditional weaning where everything was smooth and soft and blended out. Um, and then continued breastfeeding is recommended if you choose to for uh, up to two years and beyond. So there are no rules, it's it's just guidelines. No, it depends Robin, I have on a question that for you, going back to what we were speaking about. So the question was, when's the best, how to know if your baby is ready? But what happens if, mum is ready to end her breastfeeding journey before baby is ready that is also quite common she'll know and uh, what happens then is she'll talk with her baby and she'll sort out what it is she needs to do what i generally suggest is they do it slowly so the baby's you know satisfied with that but preferably when the baby's if they are exclusively breastfeeding then it's best um to do it gently and calmly so then the baby doesn't you know become distressed the mother doesn't become distressed but if she needs to or chooses to that's absolutely fine and often there's many reasons yeah. why women need to do that too so talking with the baby is important um, taste and texture is really important when you're transitioning from from breast to food and when is the right time who knows mm. i don't think anybody really knows but the guidelines do help in as much as a mother who needs to do it, then she has that to, to support. That's her. right. Yeah. Yeah. So well, let's think... let's do a case study. For example, um, this past week, I have had four women. So that's that's quite a high number based on one topic. Four women who have sought out help on weaning or transitioning from the breast, ending breastfeeding. Um, they feel their baby isn't ready, but baby is around the two year mark and they feel as though it's time to end their journey. Um, two of these women are pregnant, so they are with increased hormones. Um, you know, they're experiencing some discomfort in the nipple area. Um, baby may be teething as well, I should imagine, around this age. 
And generally, oh, you're just exhausted, aren't you? Yes, the those two-year-old They're very painful. Those are fun. Yeah. So and what can often, we say that's to often, because Sorry, Robin. Sorry, go that's ahead. That's often confused with tantrums. Yes. The tantrums are not part of my journey. Tantrums are um, not part of my journey. Twice I've said that because mm -hmm. these four two-year-old molars are very painful and they send radiating pain to the through the trigeminal nerve to the ear. And such a common um, yeah. misconception. Once the teeth have erupted, they're okay. So that might be a difficult time for feeding. Yes. For, for eating beautiful foods. Again, that depends on their appetite. It depends on their smell. Depends on their taste. Babies know whether they like the smell. They know whether they like the taste. Goodness, yes. And and if you are if you are going through teething, my heart goes out to you. It's a very overwhelming time for both mum and baby. Yeah. But nothing lasts, and um, be reassured that it will pass. We grow Do what's right for you. Hey. Yeah. But yeah. The, 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 it seems to be that the consensus is, and the and the fibre around it is very much so. They don't feel as though they're getting support around the two year mark because people are like, oh, just mm. just don't let him or her anymore. They're mm. way too old for it now. <clears throat> Just, you know, there are so many um, abrupt methods. Put something yuck on the nipple or tape the nipple or just say no, just let them cry it out. Um, how, how, what would well, you say the breast approach okay. is to a baby? That, I, that, that I say talk with the baby because the baby's highly intelligent and and say which feed you're going to choose to not not do anymore. And so you choose that, that feed not to breastfeed. But I do have something lovely for you to drink. So yes. whatever that might be, it might be some lovely fresh fruit juice, um, you know, not bottled fruit juice, fresh fruit juice. It might be, um, you know, some boiled water if they like the cool boiled water, if they like that. It could be some other milk if they chose that. There's, there's like there's a range of things a baby can have to drink. So just negotiate with the baby and then make it clear that that's the thing. Oh, no, mummy said no, no. So not for this one, but I'll give you another drink. And there's what drink would you like or if you, you know, whatever the response is. Um, it's just or, such wonderful advice to offer an alternative. Yes. Your, so then your advice, advice, can yeah. I just finish there? Can I just finish there? Yeah. So what happens is when you feel ready, you then negotiate what the next feed will be. And slowly the baby starts to realise, ah, oh, okay, right. I don't need the breast anymore. Yeah. So it yeah. does work does work out very well. <laughs> and I should imagine, um, I hope you agree, Robin, that by this stage, they they probably would have, um, or that usually they may have dropped a few feeds anyway. Um, and they might Maybe. be reliant around sleep, or they have their solid routine by this stage. Yes. I, I know that was the case for myself. And, yeah. and like you said, speaking to them, at this stage, they have a, a really good level of communication as well. Speaking even if they're not speaking with yes you. <laughs> speak yes absolutely and and we we did we offered offered a boiled water warm boiled water that was jacobs and still is his his favorite um we, we chose not to go to a bottle because we we know there are implications to the oral cavity uh, especially yeah. beyond beyond or well, six months really it's yes. not recommended here in the uk um but do you know what we did which which i never thought would be part of our journey is we we offered breast cuddles jacob calls them breast milky cuddles, cuddles. Yes. That's so i good. said you know, also their just... own their own special little cup the one that yes, they choose that that yeah. is exactly we bought new new um flasks for him he wanted an adult flask that's still his yeah. favorite but yeah we 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 slowed down per feed because i remember you said to me take each feed at a time communicate with him and just, you know, take it gradually if you can. Some women, some women have to end it a little bit quicker than we did. But, mm. but yeah, we did it each feed. And I said, look, you can have one minute and then we're going to stop and then you can have a cuddle. That's and one minute, it, honey. <laughs> yeah, they don't understand, do they? But it really, it really helped us. And he understood a lot more than we gave him credit yes, for. Highly and intelligent. Few days he did. And, and I, I think it's important that, that we set boundaries as well so that we can, you know, look after ourselves which makes us mm -hmm. able to yeah. look after them so your advice was hugely helpful in our in our journey and it's um, gentle it's yeah. calm it's not it's not no you can't have it it's about you know how you go about your life and your business with your baby yeah for sure absolutely yeah. so yes everyone is unique and there is no need to stop end 
quit breastfeeding if you do not want to. Breast milk does not terminate at 12 months. Um, this is another common question we get. Do we have to stop breastfeeding at 12 months to, to um, introduce follow-up milk, um, which should not be getting advertised anywhere now. It's actually illegal to do that. Um, yeah, breast milk is, is the best. So if you want to and you're happy to continue, please do, right, Robin? Yeah, and, and if you're doing those, is that follow-up milk, meaning the toddler milk? That's right. That's what I've heard, yeah. yeah. Well, you see, there's so many synthetics in those things. You're better off to have, you know, a nice fresh drink of something and something that's nourishing, that's going to be absorbed well nutritionally um, and, and, and um, rather than to deal and the thickness of those powdered things too is not good for the digestive system not good for the bowel i think especially so, beyond 12 months right you can yeah, introduce that's right. some more balanced milks as well yes yes absolutely yeah you can there's a whole choice of what you can do yeah i mean that. for you've got animal based milks you have plant based milks of course you yeah. might choose to express if you don't want to actually nurse anymore yeah there's so much option out there. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. not one rule fits all. Absolutely isn't. Yeah. Definitely wasn't for us. <laughs> so yeah. we hope you're finding this helpful so far. Um, I think we've just given some tips <clears throat> on the transition from breastfeeding. Um, I can't think of any other tips that I use. Dr. Robin, do you have any other tips other than what you've said? No, I mean, I use the reverse when the mother's struggling with the baby that doesn't want to go to her breast because of some reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and uh, we encourage and coax the baby different ways. And I'm not going to go into that detail now. But Yeah, but no, that, that's think, very I true, think. actually, because some women yeah. have battled to establish breastfeeding, haven't they? They've been yes. through a, a, yeah. a really long journey to get there. So, mm. you know, who's to tell us when to start, stop or or bring down our breast feeds is totally dependent yeah. on our situation. And I have been with a beautiful mother who who had only ever developed one breast, right? She didn't have a second breast. So she fed four beautiful children from one breast and she introduced foods earlier. So she did that beautifully and she fed them till they were two. Yeah. It's so, that's a perfect example of how unique we are and how incredible the woman's body is. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we, we do put so many rules and regulations down and we don't even know. Someone who's maybe not even seeing the mother's breast or her nipple to know mm. what's going on with her little baby. And, you know, some, sometimes, I don't know, I just get a little bit sad for some of the things that so women, yeah. Um, you know, if, if they were making the decisions themselves, it would be different. Yeah, yeah, so true. And I think actually, before we go, this is a good time to mention that actually your healthcare professionals might be those that are saying these, um, I suppose, negative um, comments. Um, so if you've gone to an appointment, a health check, a development check, um, and, and you've been told that you shouldn't be breastfeeding or that X, Y, Z is happening because of breastfeeding, maybe something related to, to the teeth as well. Um, seek a second opinion and and dr robin i think you'll agree here that that you will know what's right and and do your own research and make an informed decision because it is and, most likely not going to be a problem no. breastfeeding is probably not and, an issue. and in fairness to the professionals they are following the rules right they're not mm -hmm. able to work uniquely with that mother they might see her for 10 minutes or 15 minutes half an hour if they're lucky mm -hmm. and i don't mean that rudely at all but do you know what I mean? It's limited, should I say, in what they can do. So they actually follow the rules. So the rules and the regulations that are applied by others on each yeah. mother is applied. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't always fit that mother. So mm -hmm. we listen to what she says. And we spend the time that's required as part of a duty of care. And we need to be reasonable by listening to her and, uh, you know, not, not uh, making her feel inadequate or or, or, you know, the emotional side of it is can be overwhelming. Absolutely. And it's important to remember that you as mum, as a woman, as a human, have the right to disagree with the advice given and seek a second opinion. And also here in the UK, it is not policy um, for breastfeeding to be ended. They are they should not be telling you when to no. end breastfeeding, especially um, 
beyond beyond 12 months or beyond two years. Um, it's a conversation that they are allowed to have with you if they think it's beneficial for yourself or baby, but it should not be a recommendation by law. That should Never. not be a recommendation. Maternal milk for the, for the human baby, um, human maternal milk for the human baby is primary. Mm -hmm. However, if the baby needs to have something else, that's different, but we're not offering other things to fatten them up or make no, them big. absolutely. We don't know what their genetic background is. No, and and the, the babies, especially once breast and feeding is established, they love it, don't they? They, yes, they rely they on it for way more than yes. nutritionist value, which is incredible, as we know. But yeah, and especially that, once you get to two years, it's almost like they've bonded with it. So yes. don't let anyone tell you otherwise. No, and when I when I am um, talking with mothers who are bottle feeding, we use simulation. Yeah. So we're actually working with the, the parents on on how to simulate the rhythm and the cycle and the the stimulation and the swallowing that the baby would do at the breast, and we that then the mother or the partner's in control of the flow. It's not fast. It's not full on. The baby doesn't get the gastrointestinal pain that it would get when it's full on, and they're you know, refluxing and stomachs overloaded. So we can do all of that too. So it's not that anybody's left out. It's just, you know, what is needed in the moment for that particular mother and that particular baby, because in the moment changes every day. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't it just, there's always yeah. something else. But as, yeah. as you ladies, families, and anyone viewers watching, you can just tell how inclusive Dr. Robin is for every unique situation, there truly is support for you. So please do reach out if you feel as though we haven't covered your situation today or that you feel as though we can help you. Um, that You know, there are, we have a very large community of women uh, that have all realized they are empowered in their journey um, and they have control and it's unique. So um, we don't judge your situation. We're here no. to hold your hand all the way through. You and, might be um, sick of me by the language, but you know I do have a lot not. of language because I believe every woman is empowered. What we do is we encourage her. We encourage her to use every skill and every instinct she has. And if she's already empowered. So I don't believe we can, as professionals anyway, can actually empower them. I think they have that. I think we probably suppress the suppress it. So by encouraging them to do what they and going with them on their journey, not trying to change their journey unless it needs really, um, there's a, a real uh, absolute reason for some guidance in changing what's happening. Mm. Yeah, I agree. And, so and actually, you, you may know. believe and feel as though women are empowered, but your gentle reminders, Robin, your gentle reassurance and your love and education is why a lot of us are realizing that. It's a movement, isn't it, the Thompson Method? And although you don't, you're very humble about it and you don't like to hear it, it is... It is no, my professors, my professors did that. My, my three <laughs> guru professors... It's too humble. <laughs> but if you want to learn more about this journey that Robin has been on, if you want to learn more about the Thompson Method, um, I invite you to join our free Facebook community. Um, you'll see me there quite often. Um, comment member to join and I will connect with you and share the details. Um, and, and Robin, uh, well, thank you so much for letting us get inside your brain once again. <sighs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much and ladies we hope you found this helpful please do like and share this video and dr robin's page so that we can reach as many women as possible we will be back next week with a lovely story from one of our members and it will be at the same time so take care and we'll see you soon thank you chelsea bye thank you boss <laughs> no